Bakayoko hoping to pass Milan audition to bring curtain down on Chelsea misery. If a footballer could be homeless purely in a figurative sense of the word, Timao Bakayoko may feel he qualifies. Hopping from one temporary home to another is never easy, and for the Frenchman, it would be understandable if he hoped his temporary move to AC Milan is the last time he has to pack up his things. In truth, heading to Milan is something familiar, Bakayoko spent the 2018-19 season with the Serie A club when they were managed by Genero Gattuso. This time, he is there for a longer spell after the Rossoneri agreed a two-year loan with an option to buy for Euros 20 million, 17.2 million pounds. The 27-year-old has been in this position before and with a new coach, Stefano Pioli, he has to work hard to prove himself once again. But he returns to the San Siro a more sculpted player and now, he is desperate to make a lasting impression. I hope to stay here even after these two years on loan, he told reporters, via goal. Everyone knows how attached I am to this club, that I consider my home. When you are at Milan you must always aim to the maximum, I will give my all to win as many trophies as possible. At this point in my career I need stability after all these loans, so I hope to stay at Milan for a long time. I will do everything possible to make that happen. The problem is, the ball is not entirely in Bakayoko's court to win a permanent deal. He is currently contracted to Chelsea until 2023, and as part of being able to head to Milan, he extended his deal as part of the club's strategy to ensure they get a sizable transfer fee. It is a controversial tactic, but one that seems to work for the club. They sold Fikeo to Mori for £25 million to Milan this summer after a successful season on loan in Italy, and the centre-back renewed his deal before heading out on loan. But even if director Marina Granovskaya was reluctant to hand back Aoko another deal, it was a necessity. The club were reluctant to lose any more of the £40 million fee they shelled out to sign the France international from his Monaco in 2017, which can only be described as a lesson to learn from. Antonio Conte was in charge back then, and Bakayoko was initially a prominent member of the squad, making 43 appearances in his first season and scoring three goals. He had some highlights, including a stellar display against Atletico Madrid in that famous 2-1 win at the Wanda Metropolitano. But the lower moments last longer in the memory. The worst of those times came in February 2018. Chelsea were already a goal down against Watford when Bakayoko was sent off for two mindless challenges in quick succession. They went on to lose the game 4-1 at Vicarage Road. The fans were united in blaming Bakayoko and from there, he struggled to recover their trust. It never felt like he truly settled or belonged with the Blues, even with the endless supply of energy from Golo Conte beside him in the engine room. In the eyes of Conte, the Italian saw a player with huge potential. When he signed back Aoko at the age of 22, he had recently broken into the France national team, won the League One title with Monaco, and his numbers suggested he could become of the best midfielders in Europe. He's a powerful player, for sure a good signing for us Conte said in 2017. To have a powerful player in your team is very important, above all in this league. This league is very tough physically. If you are not prepared for this impact you can suffer a lot. Baka without the ball is a really strong player, a physical player. You can feel him during the game. I think he can improve a lot with the ball. But at Chelsea, competition for places is fierce, players do not get time to improve if they are not performing and Bakayoko's sloppy passing and lapses in concentration did not help convince his manager he was worth keeping around. Worse news was to come, though, when Chelsea sacked Conte in May 2018. It meant the midfielder had lost an ally and was left adrift in the sea of change that came with Maurizio Sarri's appointment. The £57 million signing of Jorginho rendered him surplus to requirements, and since then, the midfielder has had little chance to revive his Chelsea career. He spent the season on loan at Milan, but failed to earn a permanent move. So back to Chelsea he went, only to find he would be working under another new manager. Frank Lampard. The club legend had already been a fierce critic when observing Bakayoko's performance as a pundit during a Champions League fixture against Atletico Madrid. He sleeps Lampard said. His concentration goes and at this level if you sleep for a second and it's an easy goal for Atletico. I don't know with Bakayoko. I think it's well documented that he hasn't settled quickly at Chelsea and English football in the Premier League as well, and he has to come to grips with that. In June 2019, he became his boss, and it quickly became apparent Lampard was not a fan of Bakayoko's casual style of play, leaving him out of his Premier League squad for the 2019-20 campaign. Loans back to Monaco and last season at Napoli followed, but neither club were convinced to pay the hefty fee required to make him their player. 
Bakayoko admitted he harbored ambitions to return to Milan before, but the deal never materialized. There had been negotiations, but I don't know how close I was to getting back here, he said. Now that's not important, the most important thing is to be back here. Nowadays, Chelsea are a very different side under Thomas Tuchel, and the signing of Saul Niggas shows their move towards more technical players, with Bakayoko almost certain never to pull on the blue shirt again. There is a feeling that with his peak years ahead of him, Bakayoko can earn that elusive transfer and settle at his new home in Milan. That way, he can finally put the blues behind him in more ways than one.